there by Hinchcliffe. Beardsley, and it's deflected off the goalkeeper and into the other corner. Hinchcliffe. Sharp! Yes! Rubble our head hands on it, but couldn't stop it going home. Burrows having to go back a long way and look how Liverpool are being harried. But they still keep their cool. This is Beardsley. It's still Beardsley. Yo, what a goal! What a goal by Peter Beardsley. Second two. Rush in front of the goalkeeper. Played back again to Mulvey. On by Rush. He's done it again. His 24th goal against Everton. Southall was removing to the last minute. Adlet wins it. Down to McDonald's. Not sure that Tony Cotty's had a touch yet. He might get one now! Yes! Unbelievable! Three waiting, one of them is Hussein. And it's in from John Burns! Newell. Hinchcliffe. the reason we're with you again tonight an eight goal classic at Goodison Park last Wednesday now post Dalgleish Liverpool and Everton meet again in the FA Cup fifth round and we're ready to be entertained once more and the fifth round tie at Shrewsbury tonight that was going to be tough for Arsenal the third division side having disposed of Wimbledon in round four Gary Shaw was the match winner then but he wouldn't be in the starting lineup tonight Arsenal, they took four attempts to get past Leeds. Paul Merson at last set them on their way. Arsenal through to face Shrewsbury. Highlights a bit later. Already through to Wembley, Sheffield Wednesday completing a 5-1 aggregate win over Chelsea tonight. So the Rumbelows Cup final will be between Sheffield Wednesday and Manchester United. Now with some enthusiasm, we head first to Goodison Park. Everton against Liverpool, FA Cup fifth round second replay. So much has been said about the four-all draw last week, so much has happened since. Commentators are Trevor Brooking and Barry Davis. You'll never see a better match than that, as Scousa said to me at the end of last week's epic. Until next week. Well, it asks a lot, but in this city, as the resignation of Kenny Dalglish has proved, anything in football is possible. Selection continues to surprise with no place in Everton's starting lineup for Tony Cotty whose opportunism last week added to the moments sublime and faintly ridiculous, which gave us a night that Merseyside and football in general will never forget. Also, Pat Nevin, who was the star of Everton's show at Anfield in the first match, starts on the bench. Ronnie Moran sticks to the Liverpool side he picked for Luton last Saturday, save for the return after illness of Bruce Grobelaar. And that means that Ray Houghton appears in the tie for the first time. David Burrows misses the match because of suspension. As the rules require, there's a change in the referee. After two matches, Neil Midgley gives way to Joe Worrell of Warrington. The conditions promise to be a little testing for defenders. We've had heavy rain for the last hour, and the pitch is quite wet on top. Keown with the first challenge. Slight hesitancy, Neville Southall having come out of goal. So an early corner to Liverpool. Beardsley moves into the centre of the six-yard area. Steve Staunton to take it. Barnes on the near edge of the six-yard box. Coming up from the back is Hussein. Mulby. Staunton. Blocked by Mike Newell. Once again, a packed crowd. 
with supporters in red and in blue side by side. Hablet to Benison. To Kevin Ratcliffe. Newell. Sharp has gone to his left. This is McCall. Didn't start last week, but does this week. McDonald's. Looking for the head of Sharp. One of three players who scored twice in the first replay. The others being Beardsley and Cotty. Team selection, a couple of interesting points. Uh, from Everton's point of view, now Kendall decided to bring in Ray Atterveld to play a game right back against John Barnes. But Neil McDonald will play on the right side of midfield to sort of gang up in front of him, I believe. Then uh, up front, uh, Mike Neal getting ahead of Tony Cotty, and I think that's probably his extra height. They feel Liverpool slightly vulnerable on crosses, and that's why he probably starts off rather than Tony Cotty. Liverpool's point of view, Ray Houghton, a little bit of a surprise for me, playing in central midfield alongside Jan Mulby and, and Steve Nicholl right side of midfield, and Steve Staunton staying at left-back. Here's John Barnes, didn't have it for too long. Here is Ray Houghton to rush inside his man. Good stop. And he came beautifully inside Martin Keogh, who on this greasy top surface kept going. With a wonderful turn by Rush. Has hit better shots, but Southall crossed it in. McDonald. Now Atterveld. There's a bit of a gap down there as Staunton had left. Sharp. Space on this side now for Hinchcliffe, number three. Everything in a blue shirt and needing a red shirt to his right. Comfortable headed clearance for Ablett. That's a good strike, but straight at the goalkeeper. And he'd be a little disappointed he didn't make a bit more of that Ray right Atterbelt. Seemed to have got hold of it but it came back off the goalkeeper's chest. And did it bounce once in front of the goalkeeper and then away from him before there was just one of those little claims around feet. Good opportunity for Atterveld, didn't quite catch it properly. Uh, the chance come, coming really from Mandy Hinchcliffe who on the left-back position gets forward and crosses the ball very well at pace and when they had their best fill spell in the four-all draw, it was because the two full-backs, Hinchcliffe and at the time McDonald, it'll have to be Adderveld at the moment this evening, got forward and got those crosses in from wide positions and I'm sure Howard Kendall has emphasised the importance of, of those two pushing forward every opportunity. forward but uh, unlike Kenny Dalglish he's quite happy to sit down Indeed, uh, his whole demeanor doesn't seem to have changed one iota except that he was joking before the match he said I'm now having to go to places I've never been to before because in the past he's always gone straight to the dressing room and usually carrying the kit Sharp and by Watson and Keown it's a good stop there's a hand up in the air and the follow up gives Everton the lead David Watson driving his way through it was his shot initially and then an extraordinary moment when Mike Newell had his hand in the air here trying to get to the ball and it came out to Watson Got a little bit, I think, of Hussein, but found the corner. Everton in front in this fifth round tie for the first time. Great save initially by Bruce Grovela from Martin Keown and uh, one of his centre-back teammates, David Watson, up there and followed up, crashed it in and again came from a set-piece, really. The knockdowns, they are winning the ball in the air. David Watson, as you say, the second header. And at present, that is just the start Everton wanted. Five 
themselves in front for the first time. Into the space for Mulvey. Russia in a bit of space too. And this is Houghton. Barnes was waiting to pounce. Southall made sure that he wouldn't get the opportunity. And we're into the last five minutes of the first half. One goal scored in the 12th minute by Dave Watson for Everton. Adlet, Barnes, seeing a fair amount of the ball but not having any joy as yet. Usually double cover on him. That was Ratcliffe. Beardsley, Barnes, Houghton's cross, Nickel coming in, Newell. And Newell will be very pleased to see Nickel pull that a bit. But it was a good attempt. Very venison as well to win the ball. Steve Nickel wouldn't have realised the time he had there. He could have actually brought it down and hit it on the turn, and he, he hooked it quickly and the frustration building up. Everton free kick. Ratcliffe. Keown at the back. A good interception by Barry Venison. Ball was bound for Sharp. That was a great interception because, uh, again, Sharp had headed it back across and two Everton players were coming in and it was absolutely vital that Venison hooked it away. Policeman has a mark on the yellow. Matterveld, control let him down. Barnes, Rush, Houghton going like a little train down the middle. And almost got on the end of it because he wasn't seen by Martin Keown. Martin Kern went to knock it back and uh, fortunately for him, Ray Hout was uh, too close to him and it ricocheted off Hout. forward, Venison in possession Barnes on the left, Nickel on the right Beardsley again makes his pass count and it's worked to Barnes Rush was leaping Keown got there first Peel for handball, it wasn't given so Beardsley's shot deflected for the corner which comes in the dying seconds of the half playing what uh, Mr. Worrell has allowed. <laughs> it's Watson who cleared. And that's the last header of the first half. But it was his header in the 12th minute which had the most telling effect in the half. 
The header caused confusion in the Liverpool defence and from it came the right foot shot which gave Everton the lead. For the first time, Ronnie Moran has had to find the right words at half-time. And that, many will tell you, is where a manager is truly judged. And I'm sure that Howard Kendall has reminded his team that they scored in the 46th minute a week ago. And to keep their concentration to make sure that Liverpool don't do likewise. Newell. Mulby, that's a bit long. Still fine rain. Thornton lost out to Atteveld. Newell with a good cross. Good cross on the turn there. And I think how Kendall would have been delighted. Here we see him just turning, wrong foot in the defence. And Bruce Grobler decided to stay because it was always going to be away from the Graham Sharp and the Everton strikers. But how Kendall would be pleased how tactically it went uh, for him and his side in the first half. The, the extra... Midfield player denied Liverpool the space they had last week, and it, although it meant on occasions Liverpool looked the home like the home side, pushing men forward. And Rush has stolen it. Good stop. It's the first real chance that he's had. And a typical piece of really thieving the ball away. Neville Southall not for the first time to the rescue of Everton. Sharp. Ball was out. Staunton. Yeah, slightly in two minds then. Comes down to Barnes. Needed a taller player than Ray Harton. Hinchcliffe. McDonald's is the right ball, but not hit sufficiently strongly. Barnes. Strong challenge by McDonald. McCall. And the moment to take the heat off. Wonderful piece of play by Rush, just as Keown was going to clear the ball. Hit it with his right, hit it strongly. But the positioning of Neville Southall was excellent. Piece of play by Venison. And Carmen's has not been a quality that we've seen that much of. And the second replay. First time that these two have needed a second replay. Barnes. Not as much in the game as uh, I'm sure Liverpool supporters would like to see. Rush. Nickel. Again, Neville Southall would not be moved. It's 
Staunton with the corner. Hussain is up at the back. Once more, it's a spell of Liverpool pressure. All back behind the ball. Now with the exception of Sharp. Hussain. It's a good climb. Bentley! And Neville Southall just shuttled across his goal and made it look very easy. But this was a good stop from Nickel. The angle was tight and the legs did the job. Ablett in trouble. This is Newell. Houghton looks to hit it long, looks for Beardsley. Southall is there first. It was a good long ball, and uh, the goalkeeper certainly made the right decision. Everton want to make their substitution. They have to wait a little longer. Staunton. Houghton. It's a bit too tight. Kieran was reading that. A bit of a fall on the shirt and shorts, which followed, according to the referee, an initial foul by uh, Gary Ablett. Mr. Worrell's attention still not drawn to the substitution. Now it is. Ray Atterveld, who is going to be replaced, as he was a week ago. Now, who was pushing whom there? Who'd be a referee? It's good applause, the Dutchman, as he leaves the scene. And a great cheer for Pat Nevin. Become very much a favourite. Had a storming game at Anfield. Got a knock early on last week, I think, and that affected uh, his contribution. Newell. now at uh, full-back. Look again at Newell's attempt. Just couldn't keep it down as he was challenged by Nickel. Watson. Can't be done. But in the end, the ball is given away. And this time, Watson found Southall. Ablett and Sharp. The to Nevin. Barnes is the extra defender. Ebrill. Newell. Ebrill has gone on. This is Stuart McCall. Just couldn't take it in stride. Maybe a little bit of a hole has been left. McDonnell back quickly. Nickel coming up on the right. Three in the middle. Tipped over by Neville Southall. Struck cleanly. Those in the box might have hoped for the cross. Good shot, it was a late dipper, it needed the touch by Southall. Up by Hussein, and even better by Keogh. Nickel. Plenty forward still, well won by Watson. Mulvey. Barnes. Once more, it's a red encampment in the blue zone. Good play by Nickel. Rush! <laughs> Applauds the cross. The expression was a little bit of a grimace. Got up so well, but guided it too far across. 
great cross and really it was a free header for Ian Rush and uh, he knows as well as anyone they should be in home fans encouraging Everton to push forward Andy Hinchcliffe Mike Newell Nevin and Barnes has to bring it from deep and gives it away we're into the last minute Houghton Staunton Barnes has been marked so well once again the ball is a bit short Nevin, just take it down the other end, says Howard Kendall. Ratcliffe, his mistake, which started things last week, lost in the midst of time now. That will find the goalkeeper. Almost made a mark. But there was an infringement in midfield. So a free kick has been given to Everton. Home supporters are celebrating the victory. Neither manager is prepared to accept either victory or defeat as yet. It's got to be long from Bruce Gobbler. Go forward, says Southall. He doesn't want anything tight. Everton are through to the quarterfinals. And the man who left Anfield over ten years ago has finally decided this cup tie in favour of the Blues. A very different match from a week ago. But there's a telling quote by Howard Kendall in the programme. Goals, he says, create drama, but the game is not just about goals. As a manager, you take pleasure from other factors, good defending or an idea that works out well. His defensive formation and his defenders have tonight done him proud. Liverpool with so much possession, but for them, it's a, it was a story of just not quite. Howard, well, it was a saga, but all's well that ends well. Yeah, I mean, tremendous result for us, naturally. I mean, but uh, it was backs against the wall for a long period in the game. I mean, good defending, uh, great goalkeeping. And we took the lead for the first time, um, and we hung on to it, really. I mean, uh, lots of grit and determination out there. Um, no, we're, we're delighted. The Liverpool camp is saying Southall is the best goalkeeper in the world, and here's the difference. Well, I mean, I don't know what Bruce will be saying that, about that. When he it was Bruce that said that. Was it Bruce? Oh, that's all right, then. Um, well, I've, I've believed it for a long time. I mean, he's only uh, convinced me again tonight uh, that if he ever had to do that, that he certainly is. I mean, when necessary tonight, he was a world-class. Absolutely superb. Ronnie, you said you wanted to get the commitment from the players. You got the commitment, but perhaps not the result. Well, I would rather have the result than... Well, I got the commitment, but I'd rather have the result and even play badly. But, I mean, after that second-half performance tonight, I've never heard the home crowd whistling so long for the final whistle. But good luck to Everton. I'm not saying they deserved it, but this is the way that it goes in the Cup. It's a team that scores the goal, that they'll go through to the next round. But I can't ask for anything more from my players tonight. Not the classic of last week. That always was too much to expect. But Jimmy Hill, very fine performance indeed from Everton. Yes, it was, and it was a fine performance from Liverpool too. And it's a shame in some ways that only one team can go through. But it was a, a sort of hair's breadth difference between those teams in all the matches. And, and there's been a feature of all the cup matches so far, how much the goalkeepers have played a part. Well, let's yeah. take a look at the first half moment that decided yes. it. And ironically, it was a fine save from Bruce Grobelar well, in the middle of this. It was a brilliant save from him. Liverpool were just that bit suspect in the air. 
That's one header they miss. Nickel doesn't quite get it away. And Keown's, now look at that save from Grobbler. A superb save with his foot, but then the luck doesn't go his way. Mulberry gets it under his feet. And you'll see from behind the goal in a moment how even the final shot was a deflection. It comes off Hussein's feet. As it comes back there, save number one, underneath Mulberry's feet, and it goes to Hussein's leg, a deflection, and Grobbler still nearly gets his hand to it. Only he goal nearly of the kept game. that one out, yeah. Second half, Liverpool seemed to take control, but rather uncharacteristically didn't make it count. Now, why was that? The man in the Everton goal. Uh, and all, it, somehow he seems to have a laser beam in his chest that, that drags the ball to him. This was the first one here. Ian Rush was the chance. Houghton's the guy, Houghton's the guy who sets it up there. Beautifully played alongside him. And show the strength of Rush here. How he turns, stays up, but there wasn't the power in the shot but it was a low one, and Southall managed that one quite comfortably. And then it was Steve Nichols' turn. He had a fine game tonight, full of enthusiasm. He got himself through from a rush pass. It, oh, that's a Staunton who ho helps it forward, but it's Rushy, the man who's harassing. There he is, he's got it. No, this is the one where he beats the defender, gets there on his own, and slashes it with his left foot. But again, it's the Geiger counter. That Positioning was the key there one. from Southall, yeah. wasn't it? And in this next one as well. Uh, and again, this is the one where Rushy lays it on. Lots of fight goes in here. He comes in, gets over the top of it. Steve Nichols, the man going into the space. Beautifully done there. Turned onto his left foot. But that wasn't really the the kind of sharp finishing that he would uh, have really enjoyed. And of so course, really, Southall, it's, it's Neville Southall putting uh, Liverpool out of the cup really tonight. What now for Ronnie Moran? Uh, he's up against it, only four mm. wins out of the last 15. Arsenal on Sunday, not a great time to be facing the league leaders. No, it isn't. I, I, uh, Kenny Dalglish has left, and I don't think there's that much difference between Liverpool now that he's left and when he was still there in a way. I mean, there were already signs that the, the actual sort of steamroller effect of all the other teams in the first division was beginning to come to an end. There were signs when teams played Liverpool, they were beginning to feel they had a chance to break them down at the back, particularly in the air. And there were other instances tonight where they were just feeling unsure of themselves and not absolutely confident at dealing with those high balls. So teams now feel Liverpool are not invincible. So Ronnie Moran's got quite a fight on his hands to reshape the situation, you know, to get the confidence of the players in his management skills, and also to continue the work that Kenny, Dalsh, that Kenny Dalglish was doing, because there is still some work to be done, uh, as we can see. But it was, a, it was a fine contest between both teams, and perhaps if we talk too much about Liverpool tonight, we should say, well done, Everton, yes, for indeed. sticking to it. Thanks very much indeed. We'll continue with the FA Cup now, and uh, 10 days later than scheduled, the fifth round tie at Shrewsbury, a tie delayed by the four attempts that Arsenal required to get past Leeds in the last round. While that was going on, third division Shrewsbury were getting past Wimbledon at the first attempt, a result that means the new league leaders are under no illusions of the size of their task.